Okay. Uh, German or English? Uh, English. <laughs> uh, welcome everybody to my final presentation of my master thesis. As you can see, I tried to make it very comforting to Roger. Hello Roger. <laughs> He's in Australia at the moment. So I put the slides upside down that he can read them more easily. So my thesis was about BitTorrent. Uh, BitTorrent is a peer-to-peer -peer system that you probably all know. Um, there are seeders in this system. Those are the people that already have the whole file they're sharing. And there are leechers, which are still in progress to in downloading the file. And BitTorrent uses some kind of tit for tatish algorithm, but not exact tit for tat. We'll get to that later on. So, <laughs> the goal of my thesis was to implement the free writing BitTorrent client to analyze its performance and to look for ways to improve BitTorrent and to make free writing as impossible as possible. Bithy features a rudimentary interface, a multiple download support, and an option to pimp your sharing ratio. So those familiar with BitTorrent know that uh, you're graded based on the value you have up, uh, the data you have uploaded versus the data you have downloaded. And this ratio is important in some community sites. So with my client, you can just enter the share ratio you wish to achieve, and it will get you that share ratio by cheating the tracker. This is what BT looks like, like a typical download of two torrents. And there's a screen with more details, some nice graphs and stuff. And you can get it on your web page. So uh, one benchmark we did was with like uh, seven different torrents. They're of different sizes, like pretty smaller ones, very small ones, and some larger ones. Um, the amount of the peers that were in the network varied also greatly. And these are the times the normal BitTorrent client needs to download these files. So. Uh, and in these cases, the torrent did upload at full. Uh, the, the client did upload at full speed. Now, for comparison, the times with the for torrents A and B, we were slightly faster than the normal client, without uploading any data. And for so torrents C and D, we were like a bit slower. For E, we were quite a bit slower. For F, we were about same and G again we were slower but again I mean waiting four times longer for your download is not that of an issue if you can get it for free like you don't have to upload anything and do's for example in Switzerland if you download music or movies you're absolutely legal so you don't have to fear any lawsuits coming to you and that's nice and there are the BitTorrent communities. These are closed user groups where you have to get a login and um, to get in there and also to download the torrents. And usually these communities, they, they offer the newest movies released, newest music, etc. And there's several more advantages. So there are usually way more seeders in these communities because, as I mentioned previously, you need to get a share ratio of above one. So all these people in these communities try to upload as much as they can so that they keep their share ratio above one. And even better, the seeders are usually much faster than in the open wild. Which is kind of a win-win situation for our client because the other peers in those networks, they, they boost their sharing ratio by uploading to us which is good for them, and we, in turn, can download for free from them and cheat with our share ratio, we win as well. So this is the perfect environment to use uh, BitThief. 
Uh, we did an experiment to clarify on this, where we downloaded a TV series, which was about 12 hours old, from within the community and from Mininoa, a popular open tracker site. And as you can see here, the download speed in the closed community was way, way faster than in the open wild internet. So these times here, minutes, they're logarithmic. So we finished after about eight minutes, and the original client in the, no, it was also a bit deep, it was also a bit deep. In the open wild, needed 32 minutes to finish the download. So that's quite impressive. Results, free riding is cheap, it can be easily achieved, although not at very fast speeds usually, but it works. Free riding is fun, and it is even more fun in communities. That's the conclusion of my first point. Now to the problem of this. The problem clearly lies in BitTorrent not using TIT for TAT. <laughs> so, why isn't BitTorrent using tit for tat you might ask? Uh, various simulations, also done by us, have shown that BitTorrent network will not survive for a very long time if you use strict tit for tat It can happen that the peers lock each other out basically and nobody can get anything from anyone anymore. The solution is a network coding. This is a new principle for file sharing, for example, where we divide our data P into n equally sized pieces of, say, 64 kilobyte. And we look at these small pieces as being a, a integer number in a goal loss field. So what BitTorrent does, it, it exchanges these pieces directly with other peers. Like it gives one piece to one guy and gets another piece in return. What network coding does, it doesn't distribute the pieces, but it forms linear combinations of these pieces. Um, basically, we choose a, a coefficient vector, which is all zero, is, except for k positions, where we put a one. So one linear combination usually is the addition of k random pieces from the data. The advantage can be seen here. In BitTorrent, um, we have trading units. I call them the pieces, where we have, we have n, exactly n units. While in network coding, we have potentially n over choose, choose k. <laughs> n choose k pieces, which is way, way more. And the client needs to download n pieces in BitTorrent to finish, so he really needs all n pieces available. While in network coding, he also only needs n pieces, but he has a much greater set to choose from. So for example, if two peers, A and B, both have downloaded half of the data, in BitTorrent, peer A is usually interested in about n quarter of the pieces um, peer B owns. While in network coding, usually it is interested in all the other pieces the other peer has. That of course is assuming that they, they own truly random um, linear combinations. So in real life, they will probably have some common um, linear combinations already, but we ignore it for that. Um, time complexity is in BitTorrent is very is fast, while in network coding you have OK runtime to create the uh, linear combinations. You have to read K pieces from disk, um, sum them up in memory, and then send them to the remote peer. The reconstruction probability is the probability that a peer which has downloaded N pieces can successfully get the original file shared. In BitTorrent this is clearly one. While in network coding, we have no idea actually what the probability is. Our simulations have shown that it is close to one, like always one, but it probably isn't the case. So we need to find some formulas which calculate it more exactly. 
And the biggest issue at the moment, the time complexity needed to reconstruct the file, n to the power of 3. So there are two problems remaining, basically. First, what is the probability that we can reconstruct the original file after we have downloaded n linear combinations? And secondly, are there efficient algorithms that reconstruct the data in O of n to the power of 2? Because for this scheme to work, we sh should use an n larger than 2 to the power of 16. And in the end, what this leads to is basically when we try to reconstruct the original file, we get a huge matrix, n by n matrix, and we basically have to do Gaussian elimination on that matrix. And with n to the, um, being 2 to the power of 16, this is just not possible on an ordinary PC. This is, yeah, too big a matrix. So the matrix is very sparse, though. On every row, we have only k1s, and all the, the rest is 0. So we assume that there are algorithms which can do this faster in n to the power of 2 or maybe n to the power of 2 times k or whatever. That would be fine. So yeah, network coding looks very promising. I think we, we could really improve BitTorrent with that. But uh, the two questions I mentioned before, they really need to be solved first because Unless we, yeah, unless we solve them, it won't be any useful in practice, I think. Yeah, that was it. Questions? It was too fast, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Get the point of this uh, What's wrong? Yeah. So, what's your question? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, the question is uh, this addition of these k values is this uh, you simply append them or, or is this? Uh, no, like it's, it's a math calculation okay. in GF group. Okay. This is so hard to compute, or no. that's why you have to addition is simple, like it's it's fast. Okay. But the problem is if you there's been you a paper retrieve the which k was this is hard n to the power of three. Sorry, sorry again. To so retrieve which which k values have been sent is hard or not? What's what's the problem? Why do you need n to the power of three to reconstruct? The original file? Yes. Yeah, because what the client downloads is just these linear combinations, like yeah. n of them. And and this is in the end it's a linear it's a system of linear equations he has to solve. It's, I, there's no blackboard, huh? So no, let's see. So what he gets basically is here we have these let's see, these small c's okay. are the the row vectors. Mm -hmm. They have k ones in there, and here we have the p zero, p one, p n minus one. And here we have the, the linear combinations he downloaded. So he he got this the coefficient matrix and the linear combinations and he has to resolve this part. And this here is an n by n matrix which is large. Okay? Yeah. And there was a, a paper by Microsoft and they choose the the coefficient vectors, they choose purely random from GF Q to the power of N. And that has one disadvantage, that if you need to trade a linear combination, you have to read the whole file. Like the whole shared file, which can be a couple of gigabytes, you have to read it into memory, add everything up, and then send it. And that, that is uh, too much computation, or 
better disk disk I/O overhead to generate the, the linear combination. So that's why we chose K. Usually we choose. I didn't mention that, right? No. K we usually choose um, 24 or 32. So that's pretty small. You only need to get 32 pieces from this and then add them up. That can be done very efficiently. Other questions? Yeah, um, uh, how do you actually uh, manipulate uh, the share ratio uh, for the form? Uh, so, um, these communities, they, they program their own tracker software. The tracker is, a, is an application where all the clients that download the torrent announce their IP and port too. And among this announcement, they, they, send, they send the bytes they've downloaded looks for and the bytes they've uploaded looks for. And it's just adjust these values as you like. <laughs> there are, there will be possibilities for, for them to detect that you are cheating. For example, in a torrent where there are like 100 seeders and only two leechers and you join this torrent and you report like huge upload data amounts. That's obviously, that cannot be true. But so far I've not met a single site that does this kind of checks. So it's simply work. Yeah, that's it. It's a bit stupid then. Yes, <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of things about BitTorrent that could have been done much so have you implemented this network coding or is this just theory? It's theory. Yeah. We've implemented simulations, but only up to the part where they actually where they should reconstruct the file. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, simulations have shown that one example was we had one seeder at the beginning only, and we had 300 peers joining over time. And after the seeder had uploaded four times the data amount of the file, it quit the network, so we left it alone. And all the other peers who finished their download also quit the network immediately. And then we simulated BitTorrent in this situation and a scheme with network coding. And the BitTorrent scheme was like after three minutes simulation time, the, um, the network broke down because uh, a peer left which had a couple pieces nobody else had and in that case, that situation you're lost. In the network coding case, um, the network worked for I think 24 hours before it did the same thing happened. Yeah. So that's, that's quite an advantage. <laughs>